All right, all right. I apologize. I was having technical issues, so I'm not sure what happened. Uh, we got cut off, so I can hear now. And uh, the other messages I couldn't, they couldn't hear before, but it seems like we've resolved this technical issue and the problem's been resolved. So, and I have a different interpreter. So um, we're ready to go ahead and go into this call and um, uh, thank you for your patience. And we're going to go ahead and interrupt me if, if you don't understand or you need clarification from the interpreter, okay? Feel free to go ahead and interrupt me. So I'm going to go ahead. Can everybody see me on their screens? Yes, Ben, this is Susan. I can see your screen. Okay, all right, all right, good, good, good. All right, we're going to go ahead and continue. I'm going to start over again uh, with the introductions, and then we can see how uh, the code runs. And um, what? Finally, okay. And we're going to use the ADO, and then we'll show a demonstration later. But first, I'm going to discuss the benefits of using and running this horizontally and running that code. Uh, there's basically two reasons and that you want to run it through horizontally through the code. And I know some of you have already had the experiences. You'll see it up on the screen and some of it is so complicated. You know, you have the data that comes up and it takes forever. It comes up a little bit at a time and then you wait for it to come up and then you're excited when it comes up and, and um, you know, it's like watching paint dry. Oh, and, you know, I don't want to watch that. Nobody wants to watch that. We want it to be expedited and to get up there and respond quickly. By running it horizontally, that will help. It, it's not perfect. It won't resolve all the issues, but um, it will reduce the wait time. So, you know, finally you're able to, to see that and then you can see all the different options that they have. And you don't have to have all of it come up at one time, but, you know, wait for some of it to come up and then you can and pick some of it later. And But your situation, maybe you have just uh, different pictures that come up. You don't have to see the all the pictures. Hang on just a moment. This is the interpreter. His picture is freezing. Okay. Um, as it comes up, you'll see it like on the frame. You'll see the picture will come up and then later it will populate and then you'll see all the other things that will come up next to it. Okay? Is that clear? And then you the reason that you run horizontally is that um, it it won't cancel, okay? And like for example, you might have five minutes, ten minutes, or whatever it is. Then while it's running and you're waiting on the time, you have to wait until that completes. Uh, you can't interrupt it, and you know after five minutes, then it would go horizontally. How can you get this to go horizontally? Well, there's three different things. There's three different ways. You know, A, D, O. First, you have to set it up with, um, just a moment. You have to set it up with the uh, events, okay? And then you set it up with all the events, and then you're going to add that word to that, and then the uh, objective will start. And we'll show the information for all those events. The object will come up, sorry, and then it'll show it for the events. And then you have to write the code in to that event. The handler will. 
So you write that, and then uh, you can report each event, and you can respond back and forth and, and know each of those events. And if you and that's what will happen when you go horizontally. You have the different options. When you go horizontally, you'll have three different options, as I stated. Um, you have your work experience. There's only one for that. You know, you have to fetch that, and there's no uh, barriers to that. That that's just one. Okay. You don't have um, uh, others don't apply to our situation, so you just have that one option. I'm going to show a demonstration. That way, you can get a a good idea of what we're talking about, how it runs uh, simultaneously. You have the uh, VBA, and it's they only have one one uh, thread. That means that you cannot um, have many working at the same time simultaneously. You have the VBA, and then all of that will integrate together into that one thread. That means uh, a VBA. And then you'll have the, the barrier, but when that VBA is done ready, running, then that barrier will come down and go ahead and run it uh, from there. With the access, um, any host, it can access any host. And they have a whole bunch of different threads that come down from there that can all be run, and they all work simultaneously without a problem. But we have to be very careful. Is um, Most of those that go off of that to horizontally, they don't have, like, the VBA. It will block it from running horizontally. So you have to see, like, um, you have to have that work uh, just very um, briefly, and then it will uh, veer off from there. Interpreter, a point of, of, of uh I have a point for you. I think you're trying to say asynchronous and not horizontally. Can you double okay. check with Ben? Yes, I will. I will verify that. Or async. Ask him. Okay, yes, thank you for the clarification, yes. Thank you for uh, catching me on that and uh, um, saying async, thank you. Okay. Okay, and then I'll show you the demonstration. I'll go ahead and start the demonstration. The first demonstration, we're going to use the VBA only. You know, we're, we, we're not going to compare them. You know, they're going to run, one's going to run simultaneously, and then, then the other one's going to async. I have tested the one that runs simultaneously, and then the async, um, we're going to go ahead and run that. And we're going to run both of them, and then we can look and see how, what that looks like. So you can see that, and then we can do that step by step through the code together. Okay? Okay, uh, we're downloading the process, uh, record the set, and then we get the uh, picture of the information that's included, and then um, it'll process in time. But while it's running simultaneously, it's going to take six seconds, and then it will proceed from there. And we'll see what happens when it asyncs off of there. Okay, I see that it's running now. And you see that it's taken seven seconds altogether. But just for clarification, 
the three seconds. Hold on a sec. The three seconds is the barrier. So that's the barrier, and then after that, it'll start running. Then there's another four seconds after that barrier, and those four seconds are not a barrier. So it will run. It'll be allowed to run, and then you can actively do the work. Also, um, let me go back. Um, if you see where it times out and they have the code up at the top, it'll say running. You see where it says running now, where it's going across? When that finishes, then it will stop. Hopefully you'll see that happen again where it starts running, and you'll see that up at the very top where it does say running. And then after it's done, then the running will disappear. And um, it'll download, then it'll stop running. And you'll see that uh, they had the barrier for that, but I'm sure that you know that uh, my code itself is not the barrier. It, it's running um, async. That way you get a general idea of what we're talking about. This is step by step going through those codes to get so you, that you get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, with the, the first record set, you know, you're going to have that normal, that ADO, and that's the record set, okay? There's nothing special about that. We'll just go ahead and open that, and then we'll go ahead and run it. Okay, you, you can see that it's running. There's nothing special with that. Okay, you can see where it's gone async up there. Okay, you notice that they have, um, there's no um, loop, okay, with that. There's no loop. So what do you do? You kind of, when you open the door, that's it. And it's like, it feels strange. I know you're not used to that. Usually when you open the door, then you have to wait for that loop to process. But now with the, the async, it means that it will just keep running itself. And you, you can just you can disconnect. You're free as a bird. <laughs> so... Um, when it runs, then you'll, you'll see the event. It'll show, the event will show up and it'll let you know, and then we'll go through that process and the step-by-step -step process and then it will break. Okay, I just want to remind you that don't forget, you know, we have these options, and then you have that barrier, and it's really important. If you don't put that down, then that other will continue to go simultaneously, and it won't go to the ASIC. Okay, uh, and you can see the events, and then you can move that to the place. And... This is the interpreter. Um, his picture keeps freezing. Okay. I noticed uh, something really weird. You notice here 
uh, it doesn't say anything about the events. It didn't let me know about the events. If it's running the code, then uh, we'll get a lot of events. It'll let you know about that. But you notice there's only one event that's finished. So what happened to all the other events? You, they have the debug code. Um, on the other, it would continue running and the background. And then on this, you can't. You're stuck because we have the debug, which means that um, it won't let us know about the events. Um, it's not waiting on us. It's still going uh, with all that information. It's like, well, we're just going to have to, um, we have to do it like one more time without a break. I know uh, I had to click it in, to 95, and then there's three events. It's letting me know little by little. You notice that during, uh, they have the last event, and then you have to wait until, like, the end. It hasn't shown up yet. Again, it, it's 95, and then um, it'll let me know, and then on the other it would block it. But that means that you have to test it, you have to write the codes so that it will go to the async and allow it to run because it's not, um, it doesn't debug in the middle. It just goes to the async. So um, just keep that in mind when you're writing the code. All right. Okay, now we're to wrap that up the, on the demonstration, you can get a, a good idea of what we're talking about here. You see where the event information is, and that is dependent on the VBA and the availability. And then it accepts the information and it lets me know about the events. Hold on, it is freezing again. Okay. Um, Okay, and then it will let me know. And then if you have a situation like, um, you have like the most active UI, that won't help you. You have to make sure that you um, are actively working on those threads, not on the VBA thread. And also, we need to know, um, of course, we can't see the events in the future, when it's going to happen, and all of that. So that means that we have to put down more codes to be able to check and, and block things and things like that. Uh, it's not for certain. You know, it's sometimes we have to accept that. Like if you had the situation with an event, like you, um, if I go through, just a moment. Okay, sorry. Um, that means like if you were to have the ASIG, it has to match with the situation. Um, like if you had, it's not, uh, Uh, guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Now I have a second demonstration that I want to show you that's a little bit more interesting and more beneficial so that you can get a general idea of what we're talking about here. If I were to have, let's say, a um, an order form for a uh, product. 
just to get a general idea of uh, the person that would be responsible and to review that order and everything to make sure it's correct. We have the product, okay, and we have the, the picture there. So this is what that would look like. Okay, um, SQL, server, okay? That's really uh, far away. It's not here. It's not local. You see on the list there where it's showing the pictures? Uh, that's the V, uh, sorry. Bearability on there. Uh, so I want to show you the picture. Okay, so on this, you're going to see the image is going to pop up, and you're going to see the different products come up, and then you're going to go to Next, and then you're going to wait and wait and wait, and then it's going to, the image is going to pop up, and then you'll see the other products that will come on underneath it, like the subform. Okay, that's good. And then you're going to wait, and then it's going to come up again. And you're going to see, how does that picture, how does that image come up? Where's the code for that? Okay, you notice on the main frame, there's no events that are there. They only have one event that's under that frame. Thank you. Um, interpreter error, that's a uh, sub form, not frame, okay? Okay, so as you see the code there, I, there's only one line that you can take off of that picture and see that value and put that in the image, uh, image control. It's, it's really simple. But the problem is with that, um, it's going to be taking a lot of time for that to come up and, and populate. Now, like we're click it, click, we've clicked on it uh, several times, and, and then you can see what happens when you do that. Okay, now you've got to wait and wait and wait and wait. Okay. You notice it's slow. You do this step, then the other. If I click it really fast, um, it, it takes the time. It takes forever. It kind of backs up here. It, it's not wonderful, you know, and you'll feel, you have to use, have a lot of patience for it to come up. But uh, in, compared to the async, um, you'll see what happens. Okay. 
everything seem, looks the same, the form is the same. The only difference is you see where it goes off to the async and the code. Now when I click it several times uh, really fast, look what happens. I clicked it several times and it's it's coming up. It's getting faster. You can see that here. You know, and it's taking less time. Uh, but you're still waiting on that form. That form does not uh download the picture. You can ask like um Okay, you can ask him, did you download the picture? You know, do you mind downloading it, you know, and that way I don't have to wait forever for it to download. But you can see here where it had the image. All right. Now you can see what the code looks like, too. Okay, now uh, we're going to go ahead and write that, and then you're going to see where the async comes off of that. Well, it'll download, and then the async will come off of that. I decided that I wanted to use the class. And the reason behind that is when I use the class, that makes sure that all the work happens in that class as opposed to the form. Now, if you were to put that on the form, that means that you have to keep adding more and more to it, and then you're going to get barriers. This is, and you don't want that. It'd be better uh, to go ahead and put all of that into the class and then take responsibility for doing all the work with that and putting it into that class. You'll notice that I added that, and with the image has already been downloaded, and it's asking for that same image to download again, uh, you don't have to ask for that. You know, it's the same image, it's the same one, you know, this is improved, it's, it's better, because it's already been downloaded. Okay, now look at, let's see this one. In that class that you see there, it's called Identity and it's downloaded. So uh, I provided that uh, image and the uh, the control, and you'll see the, the sentence for that, and then how to get the data and, and the image. And then you save that and set all that up, the different properties. Okay, and then when it starts to go to the async, you first have to uh, make sure the, there's no pictures there. And then you have to see the original pictures. Um, let me back up just a little bit. I forgot to add something. Just a minute. Because the code is running on the async, uh, we don't know if it, it's continuing to run. So if I ask them, you know, I can find out. You know, you can um, drop that, you can cancel that on the other, and then you can start the new request. Okay. That again, you're providing those options, and then you have the barriers, and then it goes to the async, and then it downloads the events, and then the record set.
we only use one event because in this situation, we are only requesting one to be documented. The image itself is already done. We don't have to ask for the whole list of those. So then we, that's already been moved over. And then when we open up that door, it'll become available. And we can uh, go ahead and respond to that event, and, or it can be uh, put off till later. We copy the image, and then we put that image into the control. Okay, it's almost the same code as, as before. And you can see where it's running and the image and it's going off into the async. Okay, um, you only have to put that down once. The event will come up later. Uh, and then it'll close, it'll connect and then close. And then you're done. Let's see if there's anything else. I think that's it. Okay, I think that's all that uh, we have for to demonstrate today. This gives you a good idea about the async, and you can see the benefits of this situation, and you can see the images come up and everything. You can see how that um, goes together and how it uh, matches the situation, and then you have a huge download of data, and that doesn't have to be real quick. That will run, and it always runs a response, and then it will download the background uh, with the barriers that you use, and then you can do your other work, and, you know, and you'll see that's a good fit. I think that's it. Well, uh, do you have any questions for me? You can either type them in the chat, and I'd be happy to give you my best response. All right, if there's no questions, I think that's it. Um, if there's nothing more to, to add. Greg. You asked a question on there. Uh, you checked about uh, that one issue. You can it can improve going to the async and accessibility. You know you can as far as seeing into the future about how it's going to improve. Um, I don't know. Uh, what we can do is um, uh, one. And I will go to the, the MS, and we will talk with MS, um, the accessibility, the access group, and then we'll make that re recommendation and see about how, you know, all the capabilities that this has and all the benefits, and we can make that recommendation. And, you know, from another perspective, the access makes people uh, – you know, the developers don't have to write all of those codes. They can go off to the async. And some of that is so complicated. You know, you have the positives and the negatives, of course, for that. But that's really, um, it's better for the user. Mm -hmm. And you can see uh, that this will be successful. And, you know, you can think about all these different options and all these other different things that, uh, that you, can, you can do. Okay, that's a good question, Greg. Thanks. 
Okay. Well, all right. If there's no more questions out there. All right. Thank you, interpreter. Uh, they said, great job interpreting. All right. Well, if there is no more questions, then I'm going to go ahead and close this session, and you have a good night, and we will come back next month. All right. Have a fantastic day and fantastic evening. Thank you.